For example, James has mass, and J has mass. And if J were to stop slouching, there we go, I could measure the distance between the center of mass of the two objects, which would be approximately, looks like about 97 centimeters or 0.97 meters. And we can figure out the force of gravity that exists between the two of them. They are each being pulled toward one another with a certain force of attraction, a force of gravity. So in this example, we're going to figure out the force of attraction between J and James. We have, first off, the distance between the center of masses of the two objects was 0.97 meters. The masses of the two guys, I don't know, I'm just going to guess, one is 69 kilograms, the other is 68 kilograms. I don't know which one's which, you can figure it out. So then we have the force of gravity that exists between the two of you is going to be big G, mass one, mass two, divided by the distance between your center of mass is squared, or 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, multiplied by one of the masses, 69, multiplied by 68, divided by the distance between the two center of mass is 0 0.97 squared. Please use your calculator and type this in. You need to be able to find the times 10 to whatever button on your calculator. It is disguised as the double E, so please, Take a moment, plug it in. You need to make sure you know how to use this particular piece. You have to be able to perform this on your calculator. Figs looks like 2, so 3.3 times 10 to the negative 7 newton. Okay, this means right now, J is being pulled in his seat toward James with a force of 3.3 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. And James is being pulled in his seat right now toward J with a force of 3.3 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. Now, why isn't right now J sliding in his desk toward James? And why isn't James? being pulled along his seat toward J. Man. Force of static friction. It's as simple as, look at the, look at the size of this force. 3.3 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. Okay. To undisguise it, to take it out of scientific notation, that's 0 0.12345633 newtons. Clearly, the force of static friction is going to be greater than that. So this force isn't going to actually end up moving. Even more important, that. So does that mean like in space everything goes towards each other? Uh, we'll get there. Uh, let's, let's start here. So coming back to here, we have the force of static friction is going to prevent him from moving. But what else is going to make it so that he's not actually sliding, that James, for example, is not sliding toward J? Actually, the seat in his way? Uh, right, like, that's why I actually picked I mean, yes, the seat, but he could also end up sliding one way or another. I mean, what what else? Uh, Carol. There's a force of gravity down to the earth. Actually, but that's at 90 degrees to this force, right? So that's actually, if you were to sum the force, is not going to be included in that particular force. Look at James. There it is. Is J the only mass around James right now? No. No, we also have Claire. It's being pulled toward Claire. He's being pulled right now towards Sandra. He's being pulled now, right now, towards Mandy. He's being pulled right now toward his calculator, towards this sheet of paper, toward my peace lily in the back of my room. There are all sorts of forces right now on James. Everything that has mass, he is now interacting with. There's a force of gravity acting on him. Notice how a lot of those are going to cancel out because they're all around him, right? But in the end, because the masses of those other things are, too sm are so small, the force of gravity is going to be quite small. So if, for example, James and Jay were floating in space, and the only two things in the universe, they would be attracted towards one another, correct? <laughs> you accelerate, you accelerate, there's nothing you can do about it. It'd be kind of fun, but not from them, but from, for us to watch. We would actually be able to be there to watch, because then we would be attracted to them as well. It would be ugly. 
<laughs> okay, so now, the truth of the matter is that this is not really generally where we're going to end up using these equations because these forces are so small that they end up being negligible. So where is an instance where these, this equation is often used? More often. Puja. In space. In space. More, more specifically, with what type of objects in space? Planets. Celestial objects, right? Big, big objects. 